What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got the second issue of Weapon X Men. So the first issue of this series was a smash hit that gave us the return of Onslaught. And this issue continues to build on the success of the first one. And if you guys missed that first video or you need to catch back up, then I place a card to the Weapon X Men playlist at the top of the screen right now. And I'll put a link at the end of the video as well. But after the search for Onslaught in an alternate universe ended with most of that world's heroes being taken over, fortunately with the help of the multiversal Wolverine team, many of the people of that Earth were evacuated to safety. So if you guys are ready to find out if the multiversal Wolverine team is able to track down Onslaught before we can gain full power and become unstoppable, then you guys know what time it is. Let's get it. So this issue starts off with a memory from Earth X Wolverine, AKA Fat Rain. On his world, Jean had lost her powers and could no longer go on missions. And she and Cyclops had drifted apart, allowing her and Logan to drift together. Then Logan would go on to leave the X-Men, but he still helped out from time to time since they were still his friends. But that time was hard on Jean, who had begun to put on weight from sitting at home watching true crime shows. And even though she was depressed and lonely, she was still the most beautiful lady in the world to Logan. But he didn't want he and her to end up like she and Scott, so he went and saw Dr. Miles Warren, genetic specialist and had him whip up a serum to suppress his healing factor. Now he could get old, sick, drunk, fat, die, just like Gene. But it didn't bring them closer like Logan had thought. And now that he could get killed, he stopped answering when the X-Men called, prompting Gene to see him as a coward. Sure, she hadn't seen him much now, but she still didn't want anything to happen to them. But she began to look down on Logan for not helping. And she started hating herself for being the cause of it. Then eventually they were split up, doing exactly what he had done all of this to avoid. Then we pick back up with current day and Fat Rain is explaining this story to Jane. And Jane is hearing all this and she's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> she spent her whole life avoiding being shackled to a man. And now she meets all these grown ass men who are supposed to be her. And they're all completely obsessed with the same lady. That's weak. <laughs> but Farine agrees. And he figures that being around other Wolverines, it'd rub off on him. And he'd get some of that berserker back in him. But instead, he feels like he's rubbing off on them. And they all just watch the world die because of it. But then the Phoenix steps in. She didn't assemble this group because she thought that this would be an easy task. Onslaught fled to her home world. And they're going to have to find and put an end to it. Then she goes on to address the group of Wolverines. She tells the old Wolverine that she understands that killing possessed versions of his friends opened up old wounds. But getting more friends killed won't help. Then she says that Weapon X from the Age of Apocalypse is field leader. A few billion dead doesn't turn him into a weepy goth. Then of course she yells at Zombie because how the hell is he eating right now? She gave him ambient cosmic energy to survive off of. But he brought him back an arm from the last world. Nobody they know. But hey, there's eating to survive and there's eating for appreciation. <laughs> then she asks Jane if she's okay, since she doesn't get much of this type of stuff in 1909. But Jane's good. She once had to clear a whole town of Shumagorath's kids. That was way dirtier work than this, she says. Then Phoenix looks at Earth X Wolverine and it's just like, you? just try to keep up <laughs> but now it's off to another reality and we then transition over to earth 80,777 the phoenix's home earth and at the avengers mansion this earth's captain america danielle cage has been scanning for onslaught but to no avail so far but phoenix can feel its presence it's being smart though she says instead of hiding from her it's scattering its mental signature planet-wide, making it hard to pin down. She knows, though, that on other Earths, Onslaught's been drawn to its source personalities. And since Phoenix wasn't available, since, you know, she was off-world with the other Wolverines and Magneto had died two years ago, that only leaves one likely target. And Danny Cage asks Phoenix if she thinks it'll be awkward. 
But Gene responds that they've been married for 25 years now and we're all adults. No reason it'll be awkward. And then we pick up at the Summers Prior Estate in upstate New York. <laughs> and of course, Zombie is the first one to point out that this is actually awkward. <laughs> but Scott and Madeline come out and they greet Jean and her team. And Jean apologizes for showing up on such short notice, but Scott is thrilled to see her. They hadn't had much action there since Jean took down the last of Sinister's clones. These days, all Danny and the Avengers really deal with are bank robberies and natural disasters. Then Jean asks about the kids, and Madeline tells her that they're all there. They're having an engagement party right now, and their son Nathaniel was marrying Logan and Mariko's daughter, Amiko. And then walk up, that hurts Logan, along with Mariko and their kids. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to pretend I don't see the knockoff versions of me over there. <laughs> And all the other Wolverines are amazed to see a version of them with a family, with the exception of Jane, who couldn't care less. And the kids are interested in the zombie version of their dad. And zombie's crazy ass is like, come on closer and take a look. Don't be shy. <laughs> but Jane quickly shuts him down and apologizes to everybody for the zombie. She didn't know that there'd be kids here. And as Nate and his team walk up, Scott gets an idea and asks Warlock to help them out with stashing away the zombie. So Warlock's like, it would be self's pleasure. Then he grabs Zombie Logan and turns himself into a cage. Then he tells Zombie that self is not flesh. If you bite self, we will see what is stronger. Your biological zombie virus or self's techno-organic virus, which transforms flesh and blood into living machinery. And even though Zombie's mad about being caged in, he don't want no parts of the techno-organic virus. And he's like, I'm cool. Today's about the happy couple anyway. <laughs> but off to the side Scott lets Gene know that He hadn't seen anything unusual around there And they'd have noticed Between Nate's psychic powers and magic The Sorcerer Supreme But magic suggests that Maybe she and Phoenix could combine their abilities To locate Onslaught To which Phoenix accepts And when they combine their powers This helps them trace Onslaught's energy Back to the Savage Land So magic and Phoenix teleport themselves And the Wolverines there to the Savage Land and when they get there, Magic uses the Eye of Argamoto to lead the way. And then at a cave in the distance, Phoenix spots Onslaught. This cave holds the alien machinery that sustains the Savage Land's climate. So she suspects Onslaught will repurpose the machines into weapons. So she shields the group from its mental scans, but she won't be able to do it for long. And Magic responds that they need to strike quickly then. So she calls on the flames of the fall team, but Phoenix holds her back. She noticed that Onslaught hadn't moved or changed positions at all. And she determines that this is just a decoy, a being of pure thought, a consciousness. Its body is just a construct. But Magic sees this as arrogance to presume to trick the Sorceress Supreme. And every body has a link to its consciousness. So she goes in to try and link with this decoy and Phoenix tries to stop her. But Magic is hit with this construct's defenses. And if she's dead, Zombie calls dibs on the legs. <laughs> but according to Phoenix, Magic has suffered severe psychic trauma, and they don't have time to wait for her to recover. Onslaught played them. He was afraid of Magic and set a trap, and they walked right into it. Phoenix tells the team, though, that she was able to catch a flash of Magic's mind before it shut down, a general location. But Jane stops her like, hang on. You didn't join us on the last world because of the risk of Onslaught stealing your Phoenix Force without the Sorceress. But Phoenix responds to her that this is her home. She's not going to abandon it. And for all its tricks, Onslaught is predictable. They were right the first time, she says. Onslaught did go somewhere familiar. And then we pick up with the engagement party for Cable and Amiko. And Phoenix and her team come flying in yelling, get your hands off of him on slot. So the Phoenix then straight up just left magic behind, y'all. I know y'all see that. Like, she could have teleported her back. Damn shame. <laughs> but she comes in and she pulls Madeline Pryor away from Nathan. And when he asks, what's going on, Aunt Jean? She tells him that Onslaught is hiding inside of his mother. She should have guessed it. They are genetically identical, of course. But Madeline pleads her case that this is insane. And there Logan agrees. He doesn't sense anything. 
and he thinks that Gene should calm down and take a breath. But Gene tells him, of course he wouldn't see it. Onslaught is as powerful a psychic as she is. It was blocking his presence. But now that she knows, she can pinpoint. But wait, she says. Oh, no. Oh, yes, says Nathan, who reveals himself to be Onslaught. And now he's got his hands on Phoenix and tells her that on his world, he only pretended to be the Phoenix. Now by threatening your home, making you careless, I've tricked you into delivering the greatest power in the universe into my hands. And then Stubby Reen and Old Reen dive at Cable to break his connection to Gene, but they're blasted away by Nathan's father, Scott. And then Scott's kicked in the back by Jane for stopping them from saving the day and calls him an idiot. Do you want Onslaught to kill us all? She asks. But then she's taken down by Warlock for hurting Cyclops. But there are too many anomalies right now, which makes Warlock very confused. And Zombie thinks that even though everyone's always saying that all he ever thinks about is eating, this time it just solves so many problems. And he goes in for the bite on Cable, but he's met by a set of claws owned by this Earth's Logan. Not this one, he says to Zombie. But Stubby chimes in that this kid's as good as dead. It's him or everyone else. And old Reen agrees with that statement. But this Logan knows for damn sure none of these guys are laying a hand on his son-in-law. They'll handle this. But the fat one has seen enough. And Earth X Wolverine pops his claws and he slices the arm of Nathan off and away from the Phoenix, breaking the connection. And now the fighting has stopped and Nathan's parents run to their son's aid. And Madeline screams for Gene to heal him, but he's too weak. And all she can do is close the wound. And a now very upset Madeline begs for someone to help her son. Warlock has an idea. Perhaps self can help, he chimes in. But Madeline is skeptical about his help. And she's like, help how? By turning him into a techno-organic zombie? That's worse. But Warlock jumps in and tells Madeline that self's friend Nathan's power can hold back the techno-organic virus. But self must act now before the life spark of Nathan fades forever. And then he goes to work. Meanwhile, Jane checks on Fat Reed because he's been stabbed by Mariko after he'd cut off Nathan's arm. But he tells Jane that he'll be okay. The Fat worked in his favor for once. And contrary to what people think, he does have some healing factor left. So just worry about the kid. As then Nathan comes too, and he screams from the pain of the techno-organic virus in his new arm. And Gene apologizes to him because unfortunately it will always hurt. But at least his powers will make it bearable. And she offers to teach him, but Madeline snaps at her. And she's done enough. And she wants Gene to leave and never come back. And this time Scott is forced to agree. She led on slot there. And they can't risk that again. And now a sad Gene understands and she calls for the other Wolverines to walk with her. Until she's strong enough to teleport them again. Then later on is... They've gone back to their holding space. Stubby Reen tries to console Jean and tells her to just give them some time. But Jean apologizes because she broke her own rule about going after Onslaught. And now they've all seen why it's a bad idea. That's exactly why she needs all of them. That and what Earth X Wolverine did. She brought them all there because when things are the hardest, the five of them will make the hard choice. That's what Wolverine has always done. And it's what he just showed that he does better than anyone. And now Fat Rain has kind of redeemed himself from where he was when this issue had started. But enough wallowing, Phoenix tells them. We're several steps behind Onslaught. I'll get to work on finding where it's going now. And then we pick up with Onslaught on another universe. And it's finally had enough. No more hiding. No more scheming. No more incremental steps, it says. I have power enough. It's time I use it. The half of me that was Magneto dreamed of mutant rule. The half of me that, that was Jean Grey feared death after seeing it so young and fought it all her life. This world will be the realization of both dreams. It is here on this earth that I shall make mutants immortal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the issue. Man, y'all, Onslaught is hell, huh? And I guess no matter what, Cable is always meant to get that techno-organic virus. Yikes. But what did you guys think of this issue?
and how you liking this series so far? I think it's pretty cool myself, and I can't wait to see how it all ends. Onslaught is such a great character in the X-Men universe, and I hope it gets his just dues as a villain. And Zombie Ring continues to bring a little bit of comic relief in this series, which was kind of a pleasant shock to me at least. But how do you guys think this will all come to an end? And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video and this channel, and you'd like to support the channel, then you can do so by joining the Iconic Fan Club channel membership. And there'll be a link in the description to join. But with your membership, you'll gain access to weekly interactive live streams with yours truly. Where we could talk about everything that's been going down in these issues, as well as ones that you'd like for me to go over in the future and other comic book news. But you guys will get loyalty badges, member shout outs, and more in these videos. Or you can donate to the channel with a super thanks. And if you're not able to do that, then you can also help by dropping a like, share, and subscribing to Comics Icons for more icons in the comic book world. But ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I'm out. Peace.